Welcome. So here we are. Today we are planning our very own Arizona RV trip. Now, it's not just for RVers. If you're a tent camper, if you're a car camper, this trip works for everyone. Our itinerary consists of four locations between Tucson and Phoenix, stretching only 138 miles. So you'll get to see a lot of different places without having to spend a lot of time or money driving around. Now, why would you do this trip for yourself? It's pretty simple. This is a snowbird trip. There are not a lot of places in the Western United States that you can go in December, January, February, and even in Arizona, you are gonna hit snow and freezing temperatures. So this stretch keeps you in really, really comfortable temperatures in those really cold months. This is for people like you, like me from Idaho, where right now it's 32 degrees and I don't know if this is snow or rain, I think we call it sleet, but the weather is just shit outside and you wanna get somewhere warm, you wanna get out of this nasty cold weather. We like to be outside, we like to be hiking. You will be near Tucson and Phoenix, Arizona, and if you wanna hit the town for a few nights, this itinerary definitely allows you to do that. You are staying very cheap, right next to those cities. So if that's your deal, by all means, add that into your plans. But we will not be covering in this trip itinerary fun things to do in the towns. We're looking for fun things to do outside of town, away from crowds, outside, in the outdoors, in nature, where we like to be. Hopefully, when we're done with this video, you'll have your own vacation plan. So let's get started. We're gonna start in the south and work our way up. And the first spot we're gonna check out is Catalina State Park. Now, when I say Catalina State Park, you might be thinking of Catalina Island off the coast of Southern California, but this is Catalina State Park located at the base of the Santa Catalina Mountains. It is located up against the Push Ridge Wilderness in the Coronado National Forest. There are hookup sites, there are boondocking sites, there are tent camping sites, there are wedding venues. We saw someone getting married while we were there. So a lot to do, a lot of things to see. There's a lot of tours if you go online and you look at the calendar. There's nature walks, there's birding tours, there's hiking tours, there's geology tours. So if you're looking for things to do, there's plenty of that. There's plenty of hiking and plenty of trails. We did a great day hike from Romero Canyon to the Romero Pools, about a six and a half mile round trip hike. There's a lot of pools in this area. I know when you think of Arizona, you think of desert. And it is desert, but there's a lot of cool pools to dip your toes into. And don't forget to bring your bathing suit, even if you're traveling in the winter time. I am looking at the temperature for Catalina State Park right now. It is the middle of February and it is 73 degrees right now. So it may get hot and you may want to dip into a cool pool. And there are plenty of those in Catalina. The trails are open to bikes. They're open to horses. They're open to your two feet. So no matter your recreation preference, Catalina State Park has it. It's also a real big birder state park. I'm not a birder, but I hear there's a lot of you out there. And if you're into birding, there is a lot of birding going on here. Over 150 bird species nest in this state park. So if you're looking for birding and hiking and just fun stuff, <laughs> Catalina State Park is a definite great stop. These are probably the best amenities on this entire itinerary list too. These showers are phenomenal. I mean, the best showers I've ever felt in a state park. Just glorious showers. They have places to do dishes. They obviously have bathrooms. There's also a dumping station at Catalina State Park. There's also a little strip mall right by the entrance of Catalina State Park. You could even walk to it. And in that strip mall, there is a Walmart and an In-N-Out. I think two places that RVers, campers, road trippers love. In-N-Out for a burger, cause I mean, come on, it's In-N-Out. And Walmart. No, I don't shop at Walmart traditionally, but you cannot deny that Walmart comes through in the clutch on road trips. It's one of the only places where you can stop and you can get groceries, you can get a heat blanket if you're feeling cold, you forgot your 
kettle to boil water. You can pick one of those up there as well. And then I need a rivet gun because I broke something on my RV and everything is there in a Walmart. And like I said, we didn't visit Tucson, but Tucson is, I mean, you're in Tucson. You're right, you, the, the address is in Tucson. So if you wanna hit the city, if you wanna hit that legendary bar scene, it's definitely easy to do. Just stay in Catalina State Park for $30 a night, way cheaper than a hotel, and just pop on over to the city and check it out for the day. Once we cut across Tucson, we arrive at Gilbert Ray Campground, located right outside Saguaro National Park. It is technically not in Saguaro National Park, but in Tucson Mountain Park. I don't really know the difference between a mountain park and a state park. Still, this place is very cheap. It's even cheaper than the state parks. It's $20 a night for RV hookup sites, and there's plenty to do around here as well. We did the Wasson Peak Hike, which is the tallest peak in Saguaro National Park. Makes for a great day hike and gives you great views of the surrounding area. This landscape is actually quite famous. A lot of the Western movies that you see out of Hollywood have been shot here. Famous Westerns like Tombstone to John Wayne movies. And the reason that is, is there's a famous movie studio out there called Old Tucson. To see Old Tucson from the inside, you will have to take a guided tour. Tours are an hour long. They cost $17 a person. Gilbert Ray has bathrooms, a dumping station. It has electric hookups, not water hookups, and it doesn't have showers. So it's a little bit more limited on amenities, but still such a beautiful spot. You're not gonna be able to have wood fires in Gilbert Ray Campground, but they do have barbecues. And if you bring charcoal, you can definitely grill outside using charcoal. And if you're like us, we don't bring a second vehicle when we take our RV out. So it's really nice to have so many hiking options, so many trails that go right from the park out into the surrounding area. I think that's my favorite thing about Gilbert Ray is just the ease of access to everything. From that park, you can hike all over the Arizona desert on such an intricate trail system. After Gilbert Ray, we headed north towards Phoenix. Our next stop is an absolute must do hike when doing this trip. And that is Picacho Peak, located in Picacho Peak State Park. Now, we did not stay at Picacho Peak State Park, but there are campsites, RV sites available. Now let's get to the reason why you're actually going to Picacho Peak, and it is to do this hike. And this is one of my favorite day hikes I've ever done. A few years back, I went to Angel's Landing in Zion National Park, a very famous hike. And yeah, it was a great hike, great views, but it's very crowded. I, it's kind of like waiting in line in Disneyland. Lines up, lines down, everyone's trying to make the peak. This, I felt was just as fun of a hike as Angel's Landing. And without the crazy lines, without the crazy weights, it's really cool. It's adrenaline filled where you're kind of climbing on ropes and chains on the side of this mountain. Now there are two trailheads to do this hike. There's the Hunter's Trail, which is located right after the entrance to Picacho Peak State Park. And that is the shorter version of the hike. It's gonna go straight up, gonna be about four miles round trip. I wouldn't say it's easier, it's just quicker because it's shorter. So if you're in kind of a time crunch, I would go in from the Hunter's Trailhead. But I found the better hike was from the Sunset Vista Trail, which is in the back of the park. After you enter the park, you're gonna continue going for about another mile and a half, two miles past the campground to the end of the park where the Sunset Vista Trailhead begins. That is a six and a half mile trip, round trip, and I just found the hiking to be better. It was just better features, better views, uh, just a cooler hike from that side. And you're like, John, how do you know uh, which one was better? Did you do both? Kinda, yeah. We started from the Sunset Vista Trailhead and we just kind of made it a loop. We went all the way up and then we came back down the Hunter's Trailhead and then walked the road back to Sunset Vista Trailhead and our camper making a loop. So we got to see both both sides and you can do it like that as well. If you have all day, 
I recommend going from the Sunset Vista side. If you're in kind of a time crunch, go from the Hunter's Trailhead side. And after Picacho Peak, we're heading towards Phoenix to Lost Dutchman State Park. Lost Dutchman State Park is actually located in Apache Junction. It's about 45 minutes to downtown Phoenix. Just like Picacho Peak, there is this crazy looking monolith in the center of it. That is the Superstition Wilderness. I think they call it the Superstition Wilderness because there's a lot of superstition around this area. One, is that there's some sort of lost gold mine back in there. I think that's why they call it Lost Dutchman. Apparently the legend is a Dutchman a hundred years ago went back there and came out with an armful of gold and people have been looking for that mine ever since. So if you're into that kind of stuff and you want to try to find the mine, by all means, go for it. Other than that, there's a lot of the same stuff to do in terms of hiking, biking trails. There is a great hike that we actually weren't able to complete but I'm and I'm really kicking myself that we didn't get to complete it. It is up the Siphon Draw Trail to Flat Iron Peak. And Flat Iron Peak is going to sit there and it's going to call to you the whole time you're staying. Just come stand on top of me. And I got to imagine getting the top of that is just awesome. It is intense and it is going to be a challenge. So if that's not for you, luckily there's just tons of hiking and tons of trails in Lost Dutchman State Park. So you can make your hiking as strenuous or as relaxing as you want. Lost Dutchman has full electrical and water hookups. There's a dumping station. There are showers and a place to do dishes, though I found the showers here to be much more bohemian, let's say, than like Catalina State Park. This is one of those shower situations where you're gonna have like a kind of cold, kind of hot shower. You know, something that you would probably expect <laughs> on these kinds of trips. And of course you can do it the other way around where you start at Lost Dutchman and you end at Catalina State Park. It's just whatever works best for you. I hope this helps. It's a winter adventure idea for you. At least it's a good starting point. Our next trip is to the Oregon coast, but we got a lot of other ones coming up this year. Bam, Yellowstone. So if you're looking for some cool road trip adventure ideas, follow along and we'll try to help you out. Thanks for watching. See you next time.